MPG as well. Montana is featuring heavily, and here it's it, Israel. Israel. Malay's trap samples, I presume. Where are these specimens? Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Yeah. <laughs> We're working in the Arctic. We're working in Israel. We're working in Costa Rica. We get a lot of other specimens that come in from museums, and the primary goal of this work is to try to develop a DNA barcode reference library coverage for every genus of Lepidopteran on the planet. So we're analyzing quite a few old specimens here. So we do about um, 70,000 different species per year. These are the plates that are uh, prepared for DNA extraction. They'll go next onto the robot and uh, we'll see their DNA extracted. So now we're gonna jump next door and see where the specimens are stored. And so this is our archive for dry material. And we're now gonna jump down to the lower floor where you'll see the DNA archive where we store all the DNA extracts from these specimens and where you can see the uh, computer hardware that supports the Barcode of Life data system and uh, Embrave. So let's jump down there. Can I get into any of them? That's the question. All right, yes. We finally broke into one. The rest of them are locked up under secure storage. Uh, these are all minus 80 freezers, and uh, if I hazard to grab them, here are all of the wrecked. We have about 2 million DNA extracts in this room, so each one tracks back to one of those specimens that's got a DNA barcode record associated with it. And these extracts we can access for if we want to carry out extra analysis, or if uh, where permits allow that to happen, um, or in the case of Canadian material, where we can do whatever we like, it's sitting there and it's available for multi-gene analysis. So I'm leaving the building and then heading into our other building. Uh, looking at one of our 3730XL sequencers. They're yes. beautiful. They're yep. beautiful, yeah. These were the machines that really were the beginning of barcoding and still are highly useful as gold standard machines. These are all 96, well, I think, PCR farms. All 96. And we use this for cleanup, MAGB cleanup of the PCR sequencing, of the sequencing reactions for Sanger analysis. And these are 384 well uh, PCR machines that see a lot of heavy use now as we've cranked up the numbers of specimens and as we've consolidated material into 384 well format. So DNA extraction is 96 well, but after that everything is 384 well. So we've had this about two and a half years. Uh, it's a sequel one. It was the second of these instruments in, positioned in Canada and uh, it's proven to be just a marvelous instrument. So this little chip has a million pits in it, or holes as they're termed, and it could analyze, it generates about 300,000 reads per run, and it makes it possible for us to analyze nearly 10,000 specimens in each eight hour run. You can see some tape on the floor, and that is because we're going to be getting the big brother of SQL 1 in just two weeks. It'll be the first one installed in Canada. And it would make it possible in a single run to analyze 80,000 specimens. In a single eight hour run, 80,000 specimens. So this is transforming what we can do with DNA barcode library construction. So this is our other high throughput sequencing facility and uh, these are basically a couple of the ion family machines, the S5 
and the personal genome machine. And these are short read platforms as opposed to really long read platforms of the SQL. This is our server room. So we're definitely going to be adding quite a lot more computational hardware. So this is Bold, the biggest biodiversity brain on the planet.